Indonesia is home to 50,000 square kilometers of coral reef, almost one-fifth of the world's total. Known as the tropical forests of the ocean, these reefs are home to a rich diversity of animals and plants. It is an abundant and beautiful ecosystem, but one that is also under threat. Beautiful, complex, and full of life. These coral reefs sustain over a thousand different types of fish. The reef nourishes and supports them, even providing smaller species with protection from larger predators. They rely on this vibrant underwater landscape for their very survival. But they aren't the only creatures depending on it. These Indonesian fishermen count on reefs too. It's their source of livelihood. It's where they catch ornamental fish which fetch a high price in the international market. Recently though, the fishermen have noticed their hauls are becoming smaller. Their way of life is under threat and so is the existence of this magnificent ecosystem. Wayan Gombal is a fisherman living in the village of Les on the northern coast of Bali near the reef. Here, 98 families live off the sea. Our community was facing a dropping income. Coral is very sensitive to changes in the environment. It is threatened on two main fronts. First, by rising sea temperatures caused by global warming. As the water becomes warmer, it bleaches the reef, causing it to lose its pigmentation. If this process is extreme or prolonged, it can ultimately be fatal to the coral. Destructive fishing practices are also harming the fragile reefs. Indonesian fishermen sometimes spray cyanide in between the layers of coral in order to increase their yields. It sedates the fish, making them easier to catch. However, the poison is extremely toxic to the surrounding coral and its inhabitants, harming all in its deadly path. Once the coral goes, it takes years, even decades, for it to grow back. In the face of such disaster, Gombal decided something had to be done, and quickly. He brought his village together to work out ways to restore the coral reefs. His first step was to convince the villagers to go back to using more traditional methods of fishing. Some said, how would we feed our family and children? That was because they didn't understand. After several people understood, they also persuaded their families and friends to use nets. The most sought-after species in this area are brightly colored tropical fish. They're worth 115 times the price of their ordinary-looking counterparts, but they must be caught and sold alive to be of any value. Catching them with cyanide greatly reduces their chances of survival. They are worth nothing dead. So using nets makes sense and increases the village income. But that alone would not be enough to stave off the coral's destruction. Gombal realized he had to set in motion an underwater revolution. In order for catches to become truly sustainable, he set about repairing the already damaged coral reefs. This would be a painstaking process which involved the establishment of underwater coral farms. With the help of NGOs like the Global Environment Facility, fishermen were taught how to treat and replant coral at the bottom of the sea so that once again it could flourish. After the coral becomes bigger, we can cut and plant it again so that the coral grows. The strength of this project as more of the 
feeling of sharing the ownerships, uh, not just sharing the benefits, but also sharing the risk, uh, sharing the feelings of learning together and having a, the common vision. Life is slowly re-emerging. Some species of fish thought to be extinct have come back to populate this part of the ocean. This rejuvenation of the coral has not only attracted more creatures, but also more cash into the village. Now ecotourists dive around the reef, gazing at wondrous and exotic sites. Sipto Gunawan helps organize diving tours here. Conservation can be achieved through ecotourism. It has been proven that both can be done here. With the resurgence of ocean life, Wayan Gombal set up a community-owned fish export company in 2003. This was a daunting task for an isolated community. But the business became a booming success. We maintain the fish until we get the order. And after receiving the order, we send it overseas to Canada, the Philippines, United States, Germany, the Netherlands, and Australia. With technical assistance from international consultants, the fishermen learned how to keep track of inventories and revenues. As a result, their orders have tripled in the last two years. The increased revenue coming into the village has also indirectly contributed to gender empowerment. With the improved incomes, families are sending more girls to school, a privilege that not long ago was reserved mostly for boys. Women are now participating in company meetings and in the decision-making process. Everyone now realizes the future of the village depends heavily on the health of the coral reefs. It is very important to keep the environment around the sea clean. Moreover, most of us live near the coastal line. If we are not smart in cleaning up our environment, we will suffer the consequences. The new generations of fishermen are being raised in this frame of mind. Children are learning from an early age to protect the resources that are paramount for their survival. When the children start to learn how to snorkel, they are taught to use environmentally friendly methods such as nets. I hope our grandchildren will be able to see fish in their natural habitat. Things have improved, but the fate of the reef is still not completely secure. Many green experts argue that without controlling global warming, coral still faces an uncertain future. In the meantime, Gombal and the village will keep caring for the reef. When I go to the sea, it feels like I visit a farm. Because I don't have any land to plow, the sea is the place to earn something. Maybe in the future, it will be my heaven.